Did you see it? I'm going totally plant-based. I'm gonna fill you in. Hey, and what I'm doing. Hello, Emily, I saw you just joined. Team Sherry joined. Welcome, guys. We will get started here in about two minutes at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, for those of you who are joining the rebroadcast, hello, somebody else's Periscope, it really gives an opportunity crush my son's head, it really gives us an opportunity to be able to help other people on their journey. And that's karma, son. He tripped. He came in and totally um, periscope bombed me, and then he tripped on his way out. Karma! <laughs> Anyways, you guys. So, you know, what does it mean I'm glowing? I am a little bit. I've got this really great ring light, and I had my workout this morning. That's why I look the way I do, because I'm kind of sweaty still. And then you take a shower. So, you guys, thank you, Samurai Fit Club, for inviting your followers. You guys, again, I'm Coach Lynn, plus size health and fitness motivator. I help, uh, my goal is to bridge the gap between those who are plus size in the health and fitness industry and to put a voice to the thoughts in your head because those thoughts we have rolling around, the ones that we think that we're totally alone on, you'd be shocked, 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 shocked at how not alone you are. So, I use the hashtag weight loss, but for those of you who follow me, you know that I don't really talk about weight loss. Um, I believe in being nourished. I believe in not feeling deprived. I believe in um, living a healthy life, but that's a really great place to go to start a conversation with people who are really struggling with it. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know about me. If I focus on weight loss, I quit. And then I start again, and then I quit. And they start again, and then I quit. Am I alone? Do you guys do the same thing? Like, if you focus on weight loss and a number on the scale and your pants, on your dress, or on the measuring tape, and you don't reach that by that date, or you don't reach it by the time you think that you should, do you quit? Mm -hmm. We all do. We all do it. So I use the hashtag weight loss, um, not because I've redone this five times already to laugh out loud. It's totally true. Um, because those are people I want to have conversations with. Those are the people who are struggling with this. And those are the hope, ones I'm hoping that I can have this conversation to maybe shift it to non-scale victories and things like that. But today's Periscope is about me going totally plant-based. And so what that means. You're like, well, Tulane, you have been plant-based. And I have been. But I mean totally plant-based. So let me tell you where I started. So I have always been a hardcore meat eater. Hardcore, hardcore Every meal, meat, 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 meat. Um, the idea of protein-rich diets were just like awesome for me. And I'm not saying they don't necessarily work for me, but I'm going to be 42 in November. Does my skin with no makeup on look like I'm going to be 42 in November? No. Thank you, Shakeology. Thank you, Whole Foods. And thank you, hydration and exercise and rest um, and removing really stressful things out of our life. Yep, I'm going to be 42 years old in November. Okay, so I got to ask. You guys won't like, I. yep. Okay, so I got to ask. How old do I look to you? Because I'm curious. Now that I told you 42, now you're only goes in a few years of that. But no makeup on, like, you know, my quote unquote dark circles. Yeah, see, going plant based, um, 32. I get my 30s a lot. I've actually gotten upper 20s with that. Mm, you're flirting with me now. But I used to have really dark circles under my eyes. Um, I don't have it anymore thanks to being nourished. So that's why. All right, I'll take that. I'll take a seven year, uh, seven year age difference from where I am right now. I'm very proud to be um, on the verge of 42, but as of today, I'm 41. So darn it, I'm 41 years old. Um, so I have really started to embrace this idea of being plant-based and how meat itself makes me feel. So let me explain something to you. I have a great deal of respect for those who are vegan. Thank you. Um, uh, is it E. Schnick? Something like that. Um, for those who are vegan or vegetarian or choose or paleo or whatever that is, this is not about things that have a face. I won't eat them. Um, I get that, and I, I have cute kitties, and I love animals. It's not where I'm coming from. This is purely from a health perspective, and having experimented to figure out where I'm getting good results from health-wise, and what's working for me and what's not. So, um, I would eat meat every single meal, and no problems with it, and I, I, then I was, I, and it actually is true. If I, hey, sister! Sister Mary, it's my Mary. She's my sister. When I unzip, Mary Shrink walks out. I love her. And she is super, super, super fit. And we inspire each other. So when you guys say I can't relate to the size twos or size fours or whatever size this chick is, I'm going to tell you something. This is honorary plus. And if you are working with her and you're plus size, you're a lucky mofo. Um, never judge a book by its size because she's amazing. And she is my sister. Um, okay, so... Going back to this whole idea of going plant-based, 
I've tested this idea, thank you, Tony, telling me an inspiration, of removing meat out of my diet. And I think the biggest catalyst in this, I keep talking about it, I don't have the book here, because I think my husband's now stolen it, or my kids, it's here somewhere. I'm listening to it. Um, Super Life. And he brought up a very good point. And I'm doing intermittent fasting. Mary and I don't talk about it. I'll talk about more about that later. Um, he brought up a very good point about when meat sits in your stomach and it putrefies. What? That is as disgusting of a word as moist. I don't know about you guys, but like moist is disgusting. Like, please don't use the word moist around me or putrefied. Ooh, right? I thought, okay, are you trying to scare me? And he's not. I mean, he does lead a meatless life, but he's along the lines I am. He's not anti-meat. I mean, he knows the health benefits from that perspective, but he used to eat meat. So it wasn't a vegan thing, at least not the way he presents it in the book. And nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you where I'm coming from. No judgments at all. Um, I'm like, meat putrefies my stomach. I'm like, okay, do you guys want to know, can I TMI for a second? Are we like just with friends, right? Like, um, okay, just to be honest with you, nothing smells anymore. You want to talk about things that are rotting in your stomach? I can go to the bathroom and walk away eating. Yeah, I'm totally TMI. And walk away and people don't even know that I pooped. Okay, moist cupcakes are good, but just the word moist is disgusting, Mary. <laughs> I literally, 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 when I don't have meat in my diet and it's all plant-based and I haven't consumed any meat, I can literally drop a load and I do many times a day because I'm so regular now um, and nobody would even know that I pooped. Okay, I know that's total TMI, but can I just share that that's an important part. Like, I know people who have a real hard time going poop, you guys. It's not normal. We shouldn't be pooping one time a day. We should be removing those toxins out of our body. And that was kind of one of the things that made me realize that Maybe there's something to this. All right. So I'm going to experiment with it. I'm going to see how I feel. I love how you just put it out there. I do, you guys. I'm going to talk about shit. Why not? I hit the first bathroom possible because mine is horrible. Then stop eating meat, Mary. <laughs> she said she's going to try it. <laughs> but it's true. It's like I notice a difference in what's coming out of me. Um, since I've removed a lot more meat out of my diet, got more plant-based, I don't deal. I have, for a while there, I was dealing with bad breath. Um, my body odor has changed. There's a lot of very traditional things that we're always trying to put stuff on top of, like my skin and stuff like that. All of that has changed because of what I'm putting in my mouth, which makes total sense, right? Like we all know this, but it just takes us a minute to be able to um, actually apply it to our lives. So I tested this whole idea to see how do I feel about when I remove meat from my diet. You guys, look, I cannot deny it. There is a distinct difference. And um, I think Darren does a very good job. And I'm not saying everything he shares is I'm, I'm completely on board, on board, on board. I'm experimenting, okay? And he supports a lot of what it is that he shares. And he does it from a very layman's um, perspective, in other words, so we can all understand it. And if we want to go do the deeper research that we can. And I am already taking in, um, see, me, Paul and I started No Meat uh, Week today. Okay. I am already taking a lot of protein. There's a lot of foods that we're eating. You guys remember, animals are eating plants, plant-based stuff, or they should be if they're like on free range or whatever, right? So we're consuming what they're consuming, and then we have to be really aware of what's actually going into the meat. If I'm already dealing with things that are, um, are already hormonally based, then why am I eating flesh that's filled with additional hormones? Like, it doesn't make sense, or should I say it makes more sense. So this is where I'm coming from. Do I have all the answers in my hand? I do not have all the answers in my hand. Do I know it's a good fit for me exactly yet? Not exactly yet, because I gotta be willing to experiment, and I have a little bit, and so now I'm gonna go in to see what could possibly, like what the outcome's gonna be. My biggest concern is, and while I don't count calories, my goal is not to um, deprive or um, remove calories. Okay, you would be shocked at how many proteins are involved in vegetables. And um, I don't have the book on me, but we are consuming more protein than we realize in our greens, which was something I didn't quite recognize. Kale, thank you, Mary. There was like, uh, I think, yeah, like it was a trip. Um, Mary had just mentioned kale. I'd have to go back and look at the book. And if you haven't gotten Super Life, go get it. Um, so worth it. If you're not on Audible, if you haven't signed up for it, your first book is free and you can get Super Life on there. Um, yes, I feel 
more satisfied and it's more filling the higher nourishments in my food. And so let me give you an example, okay, where I first experienced this and I talked about this on a previous Periscope. So um, Super Life, um, watercress or romaine um, if you can't eat kale. So, okay, so there's some suggestions. You just have to look it up on, on protein. So let me, so hold your questions for a second or just copy them and because I want to answer your questions in relation to what I know or my experience, okay, not as an expert in this. When I first started on this journey, I was eating tons of junk food. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I eat tons of junk food. And so every time I would eat junk food, I could put down a whole pizza and three haagen bars afterwards. Now, I'd be on the verge of vomiting after all that because it is a lot of volume in my stomach, but I had eating disorders and that was part of it. I would either be anorexic or I'd move into binge eating. But I found that the less nourishing the food was, the more I can put in or the sooner I was hungry afterwards. I didn't recognize that until I started using the magic bag of powder. So I started using Shakeology when I absolutely didn't believe in it. And I started getting dense nutrition in my body and I could feel the difference. And so I wasn't hungry as often. So now my goal is not to be hungry and just not eat for long periods of time. My goal is to be nourished, much like you don't want to wait until you're thirsty to drink water, right? Like you need to keep the water flowing. Well, the same thing when you're eating, you want to stay nourished okay this is not like a diet plan you need to stay nourished it means that you eat your freaking food okay <laughs> so it's about eating so that was my first thing so the more nutrient dense it is when I'm eating yes the more it holds me over now I will be ready to eat again because my body's using up what it needs to use I tend to poop a lot more often you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but my first realization with that came from Shakeology and that's why it's a tool that I really really credit so the denser my foods. Now what happens is, is that for a while there, the idea of eating greens would make me want to gag. Like, ew. So what I started doing, I had a periscope on this. I started chopping up my salads. I have one of those hand blenders, hand choppers, and I would just like pulse it and it would chop up my salad. They have the, the crank pulley ones that you can use. Um, something I learned from the CEO of Beachbody, um, who hates his vegetables and why Shakeology was created. Um, and so when I was doing that, I was able to get more greens in. The next step we started using was we started using our blend tech, which is like a cheaper version of a Vitamix, but equally as fantastic, um, that was gifted to us. And what that allowed us to do was it allowed me to get more greens in and also be able to keep in like juicing. You're removing the juice when you're blending it. You're actually maintaining all the fibers and all the good stuff. That's where all the good stuff is, is in the actual flesh of the fruits and vegetables. So we started doing that, which allowed me to start putting more greens in my body. The other thing I started doing is I started using a, oh, what's it called, Power Boost? The greens version of, I should know this stuff, right? But I'm just a chick. Um, Beachbody came out with these things called Boosts, and it was a greens version, and so I'll add the greens to my Shakeology. So, yes, I am consuming some juice kind of stuff, but I have to chew. I got to eat. So I'm not on a liquid diet. I think all that is bullshit, but... I do use that to help me get more greens in my body. So I don't count how many greens I'm having on a daily basis, but what I want to have is a minimum of six cups on a daily basis because I'm utilizing the 21 day fix. And so I wanna make sure that I'm using six cups of greens on a daily basis. And so I'll do that with kale. Um, if I'm making a green juice, I'll add in more cucumber, which is more water-based, things like that. So that was the transition that I made. And so I'll tell you this, like I don't know if you guys see it, but a lot of this, like my thyroid, even though it sits up high, I can do this and I don't feel it at all externally or internally. That's huge. Now, I've been off of thyroid medication now for a few years. I'm symptom free of my PCOS, my migraines, et cetera, et cetera. When I start going in and dabbling into the foods I shouldn't, I start feeling things. I don't go full blown into my symptoms, but it's my body's way of going, knock this crop off. Like this is not an option for you. But it's my crack. It's my heroin. It's no different than somebody has an alcohol problem or sex addiction or stuff like that. So meatless proteins. There you go. Peas, quinoa, nuts, nut butter, um, beans, chickpeas, hummus, tempeh, tofu, edamame. So I personally stay away from anything that has, um, yeah, it's a great feeling when you can do it. I Well, I don't know your exact situation, but you have the potential of doing it. I personally stay away from the soys um, unless... On occasion, I might have tempeh, which I learned through the um, Ultimate Reef Reset through Beachbody. Um, but I avoid it because of the disorders I had with hormones. So how much it exactly affects me or not, this would be a good time to start kind of playing with that once I go um, 
plant-based and get more focused on this, but right now I'm just going plant-based. So my, um, yeah, dude, food is healing. The, the second that I stopped saying that food was a bill, villain, I used to eat like this. So people could not see me eat or chew. And I had no stomach when I was anorexic, you guys. And I used to hold a book over my stomach so people couldn't see my stomach. Did you guys see the stomach I just displayed? And that was that was down like two feet on my um, on my Facebook page where I was talking about how much my belly apron has come down. That is a far cry. So I've come to this different place in my life on this journey, which is what I'm sharing with you guys. So that's where I am. So I have been eating mostly plant-based, or not mostly, I have been plant-based, but now I'm completely removing. So do you at, need more green containers since you're emitting the red containers? I'm figuring that out. It's Melissa because I can recognize your picture. I'm figuring that out. I don't have 100% the answer yet. So I know in 21 Day Fix, it looks at, um, I know no clap section, um, it sees beans as a carbohydrate, which is true because it is high in carbohydrates. So I got to figure that out. Um, and so I'm still doing some research on that. So, but what I'm going to look at is the overall amount of protein that I should be eating and I'm weight training, you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at plant-based foods to, um, add in the protein I need. And then um, Kobe Linder, who's a great friend and has this fantastic transformation, recommended a pea protein, P, P -E -A, not P -E, P -E -A, um, protein powder uh, that I'm going to look into. Okay, so do you eat le eggs? Now I do. I'm debating back and forth on that. Uh, oh man, my cheering section was huge. I love Mary. Mary's super, super fit in her ass claps. That's her, that's her cheering section. Like legitimately, I've worked out with her. Her ass literally claps. So her ass claps, my belly claps. It's really cool. Have you tried vegan or vegetarian meat? No, I'm not going to do any um, substitutes such as tofu, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I will be incorporating more beans into my diet. Nuts um, and seeds. So, and then again, looking at the vegetables. So I'm still figuring it out. And you guys... Uh, there's all these people who've like figured out, figured out, figured out, figured out. Here's what I teach those that I work with in my plus size support groups. I teach you how to figure this stuff out for you. Because for those of us who are dealing with hormonal issues, PCOS, insulin resistance, and things like that, at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that we do have to remove to our diet. And that's sometimes just too much for our heads to take in. And the detox like literally starts to occur the second we start thinking about it. So out of respect for all those who are struggling with those things, the feeling is real. Um, all those things are real. Um, you always give me something. Oh, yay, that's good. I'm glad. That makes me very, very happy that you walk away with always information you can utilize. So um, it's, it's in steps. You've got to figure it out. You've got to figure it out for your body. You've got to figure it out for your activity. Like, I'm still not moving enough during the day because I've, now I've got this bum knee, right, which has gotten much, much better. However, I need to physically move more during the day. If I'm moving more than my my uh, nutritional needs shift, right? So it's all a process, all of it I'm figuring out. I don't have this full answers for you, exactly what's gonna work for me. And even if I did, honestly, I wouldn't tell you every step because what works for me is not gonna work, necessarily work for you. So if I can generalize the conversation, the idea of super life, the idea of 21 day fix, the idea of um, experimenting, removing meat. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I did hugely increase my sugar, especially mangoes. I'm a mango fanatic now, and I used to hate mangoes, the texture, the taste, everything. I just like the smell. But I've been eating a lot of mangoes and adding them to my juice. So I'm a little heavy in my fruits right now, so I'm going to be cutting back on my fruits. And so if I can take two things that I can shift, if I can just, it is just natural sugars, but I'm eating a lot, I'm, I'm taking a lot of it, so it seems. So I'm taking two different aspects. I was telling my husband, I'm like, am I going to remove the meat and also reduce my fruit at the same time. And so we were kind of toying with the idea of doing one versus the other, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so I'm gonna commit to a period of time. I'm going to the Florida Keys. Hold on, I'll tell you when I'm gonna start. Okay, so I'm leaving for the Florida Keys on the 24th at like midnight, okay? And I'll be in the Keys the 25th, the 26th, and 27th. Just me, whole family's at home. But I'm going for a leadership trip that I was invited on. And so I've committed that one to the Florida Keys. If I am going to have any meat, I might look try the local fish. But between now and the Florida Keys, this is my goal. So you're talking about 17 days, I think is what it comes down to. Probably by the end of that week, it'll be like 21 days or whatever it's going to be. So I'm giving myself a period of time that I can try it, 
see how my body reacts and responds to it, and figuring out what is working for me and what isn't. And if I don't make everything a drastic change all at once, I can determine whether it's the fruit that maybe I do need to have more fruit or maybe I do need to have more protein or maybe I need to consider you know, adding the meat back in. I'm only adjusting two factors in my overall eating when usually I only adjust one. So by these two little adjustments, I'm gonna be able to kind of gauge by tracking my food and mood, how I feel, um, making sure I, I drink now distilled water with, um, with Himalayan pink salt in it, so I drink very, very clean water now. So I do everything in layers, okay? So at the end of the day, we know we have to eat very, very clean, whole foods, exercise, nutrition, um, hydration. We know the answers. We know what it requires to get there. What we need to do is give ourselves permission to get there in layers, and that is what I teach in my groups, and that's what I teach to my plus-size ladies. If you try to do everything overnight, you're gonna go, you're, it's the definition of insanity. You're going to keep going through the same thing and restarting and quitting and restarting and quitting, not recognizing that that's, in fact, a detox that's happening, and it's not necessarily that you lack willpower and motivation. Um, there you go. I'm starting little to no meat that I'm going to reduce and eliminate gluten. See, so Mary even, and like I said, Mary's super fit. Like, people can make assumptions that Mary just got it all dialed in, but Mary has obviously some health goals that she wants to accomplish in her own eating or moving plant-based. She has something in mind that she knows that maybe she needs to make some adjustments to. So this is not a size conversation. This is not a weight loss conversation. It is health driven inside out on a cellular level. And that's why it's so important. What is the thing? Okay. I'm going to tell, okay. Yes. Mary does have digestive issues. I do remember that. Okay. So Himalayan pink salt, I'm going to tell you to go use the Google and look it up and talk, look up the benefits of Himalayan pink salt. But it has basically, I, I use that in, in, instead of any other salt. It adds in the minerals back into my distilled water. And um, it's like the purest, cleanest form of salt that you can get. So um, I have, when I have clean eat, clean eaten before, not taken enough salt or fat in my diet. Not because I'm trying to go low fat or no fat. It's just a natural thing. So I have to make sure that I add in coconut oil or I add in um, avocado. And I have to make sure that I add in salt and so i'm using a little more salt than i normally do but i add in the himalayan pink salt to my water and um when i cook i'll sprinkle i'm literally it doesn't take me a lot it's like it will enhance the flavor but i'm really putting it in there to make sure that i have salt in my diet because a salt crash feels a lot like a sugar crash and it can't be good for you like use a google so um, yeah so you can find a lot of really great information on himalayan pink salt and then also if you're looking for something that has a lot of great information in one place i recommend recommend um, checking out super life by darren Olin. anybody else have any other questions you're welcome anybody else have any other questions and why I'm, and my goal honestly my goal is just to get freaking healthier like healthier and i'm going to use mary as an example again okay so my friend mary shrank if you don't follow her please follow her um, ate steak last night, today I feel bloated, never put the two, exactly, right? So that is the food and mood thing. I will totally keep you guys updated. So if you put Mary and I together in a photo, Mary is very, very, very fit. She has like consistent six pack abs, okay? But when you look at what we're both trying to do, we're both in our 40s and we're, should I say that, Mary? Sorry, you love me so. But we're both working on our health. Like we're both working on rebuilding ourselves or improving ourselves on a cellular level. This is not about weight loss per se. Will weight loss occur? You guys, look, if I'm eating whole foods and I'm moving and I'm hydrating, and I'm doing the things that are going to happen. You guys, the big dirty secret, weight loss happens. Weight loss freaking happens. But I got to focus on my internal, on my cellular level and focus on my health gains versus my weight loss. So the weight loss ends up being a byproduct of these healthier choices. Exactly. Always learning and growing. And Mary and I's needs in our 40s is very different than our needs in our 20s. And my son, who's an athlete, he really, really, really loves his coaching. And now he can't drink other water. He has to drink the distilled water with the Himalayan pink salt. And that was purely not because I made him do it, because of the example we set um, by having that in our house. And so now he's doing that. So for those of you guys who are maybe living a quote unquote unhealthy eating lifestyle, we did fast food three times a day, broke the joke, homeless. Um, it's what we had to spend money on food. I live that excuse too. Um, don't be afraid and think that you can't undo any of that or what your kids have learned. I will tell you both my kids are shining examples of that. My now eight year old as of yesterday um, struggles a little bit more with wanting to grasp onto food, but 
that's kids. That's, that's that age group. But my teenager, who's going to be 16 in December, um, he really listens. And I'll go, you got to do this. You, like, homework. Homework and studying, I will do that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be on him. And basketball. But when it comes to the nutrition stuff, we're by example. And so he'll want to try it. Oh, this tastes good. I made amazing um, black bean brownies the other night. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It came out like cake. Step outside the bubbles and I sell outside. Totally. I'm trying to go plant-free. Wait, probably plant-based, but just working on portions. I've lost 18 pounds without adding plant-based. Okay, got it. Um, oh, are, were you saying that you had eliminated plant-based foods and you're going um, more protein-based? I was trying for the high coach. Better post that. Re I know. I need to post that recipe. I have a picture of it, too. The brownies. Really good. Oh, not trying to go plant. Got it, got it, got it. Um, I wasn't trying to either. But um, I couldn't deny the changes in my body. So pay attention to your body's reaction and what's going on and recognize what detox is and recognize it's not lack of willpower or lack of motivation. It's a, something going on at a cellular level. I've been preaching this for over 10 years, you guys. I have helped women with PCOS for many, 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 many years. Um, Oh, I know our phones are crazy. Um, they're always like auto correcting stuff. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Super Life, check it out. You guys, I'm going to run off because I'm not going to have a super long periscope again today, but I hope that helps you guys. You know, my goal is just to share my journey as I discover new things about myself or as I try new things to let you know that this is just part of the process, that your journey to fit is your journey to fit. And that's all there is to it. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but we know what we need to do at the end of the day. Do you know if, how I can get my three-year-old to eat more vegetables? Shakeology. 100% Shakeology. How was your son's birthday? It was fun. We uh, did a very small birthday just at home, just very, 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 very humble. And then um, last year we were supposed to have a birthday party for him. We were unable to make it. We're still just kind of coming out of our financial struggles. And um, he hasn't forgotten. So he's turned eight years old and all he's ever wanted is a birthday party. And so now that things are a bit better, and it's still, it's still a stretch. It's not the best time. We are actually going to have a birthday party for him, but we actually have to wait until the first weekend of October. It's all about budgeting and figuring stuff out. And I'm never, ever, ever, thank you, Mary. I'm never, ever uh, shy about sharing that part of my journey either. So, um, yeah, he's really excited. Plus, he doesn't start school until Wednesday, so he can't really tell his friends until the following week. So it gives people um, a few weeks to be able to come. So he's going to finally have... His first official birthday party was supposed to happen last year. We couldn't make it happen. And it's happening this year come hell or high water because things are better. Anyways, that's it, you guys. Much love to you.